Hello, welcome to another system design video. Today, Mark is gonna be sharing his top 10 principles that you really must apply in your system design interview. Now, you may have seen some of the mock system design interviews that Mark has done with me, uh, which we've had incredible feedback on, literally thousands of likes. Thank you so much. Um, but before becoming a coach, Mark was an engineering manager at Google for 13 years. So as you can imagine, he's interviewed a lot of candidates and he knows exactly what interviewers are looking for in system design interviews. And he knows what you can do to make sure you give them what they want. Um, so Mark, uh, thanks for doing this with us today. How, how are you feeling? I'm doing great, Tom. Thanks for setting this up. I, I, I hope that there are some useful principles and tips and tricks and things like that that uh, will help people with their system design interviews. Because I mean, I've definitely collected some of these things, uh, even through my coaching sessions and, and actual interviewing. And so there's, there's hopefully some useful things here that, that will help people. There's loads of useful things. I've, I've, seen, I've seen your list and uh, it's, all, it's all gold. Mark, what's your first tip for system design interviews? Yeah, so let me uh, preface maybe the, the, the tip uh, with some principles. So one of the things that I sort of realized, and this is uh, a maybe less of a tip and trick, but just a realization maybe for folks, is uh, that as folks say, well, you know, I, in, in my real work, I do system designs all the time. But of course, you know, I don't do that in 45 or 50 minutes or whatever. And that's absolutely true. So you are in this artificially compressed time frame. And that's just mm. that's just, uh, you know, something uh, reality we have to kind of live with in this in the space. And so one of the aspects, uh, what that means, one of the principles really is that you need to be very efficient in terms of this interview and, and what you're doing more more so than if you're at a whiteboard with colleagues or you know in design docs and things like that and so one of the one of the things i would say is uh principles there around there and maybe tips and tricks uh is communication efficient communication so you need to be able to communicate with the interviewer in an efficient way you don't want the interviewer wondering uh what you're thinking or or trying to trying to uh envision what you're what you're designing or working on and so what that really means is you're trying to get your mental model of what you're thinking and their mental model as aligned kind of as closely as possible during the interview or keep them aligned as closely as possible so that they can follow you. So they can, they can follow your thinking, understand what you're doing, not necessarily agree with your design because <laughs> it may not be what they're thinking, but uh, you want them to understand what you're thinking. Uh, and that's kind of one of the principles, I would say, and one of the tips and tricks is a kind of a fundamental or core one. Yeah, I think that's a really essential one because obviously you might be a great engineer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a great natural communicator, right? So I feel that's, a, that's one that we have a lot of candidates really that find that, find that part of it tricky. They, they might be able to you know, do all the, all the technical stuff perfectly, but when it comes to actually talking the inter interviewer through their thought process, then, then that's a whole nother challenge. Well, and especially in the context of an interview, <laughs> 45 yeah. minutes, that is yeah. a different flavor of communication, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if I think about um, sort of another sort of area of this uh, or another aspect of this maybe compression or, commu uh, you know, efficiency, maybe uh, one of the things is to really make sure you think about and scope the problem. So what I mean by that is uh, if your interview system design interview, as sometimes they are, is design Spotify or design some big thing, YouTube, or, you know, pick, pick your, your existing kind of a system that's out there. Um, that's obviously way too big for, for you to, to be able to, to design in a 45 or 50 minute interview. And so, um, in that particular, in that scenario, I would say, you know, you need to scope the problem down so that you can come up with something that, that, uh, a solution that, that works or addresses the requirements or the problem, the stated problem. So scope the problem, I guess, is really the, the tip. Scope the problem to something that you think you can, you can complete it during the interview. Um, and in some cases, interviewers will intentionally be vague about what the, what the problem is. So you'll need to kind of fill that in either by asking questions, stating assumptions, things like that. Uh, and in some cases, you'll just need to remove functionality completely. And in some cases, you'll need to pick your, your interface point. Because if the system design problem involves an application on, on, your, on your phone, well, you know, you, you're not, it's going to be tough to, in 45 or 50 minutes, design a whole system that includes the front end all the way to the back end. So uh, this is what I kind of mean by, by scope the problem. Identify the space of the problem that you think you can solve in a, in a 50 minute interview. And that's hard. I'm not saying that's easy, but I would say be intentional about it. Think about that as, as uh, spend a little bit of time on that at the beginning. 
Okay. Yeah. So maybe like for an example, let's say, uh, let's take design. Let's say I'm an interview and I ask you to design Spotify, like, like I did in one of our other videos. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you take that and you, you say, okay, but which part of Spotify, like what, what actual functions do we need to, we have? Right. And if it's, and if it's something, uh, you know, where there's uh, multiple aspects where there's sharing involved, for example, you know, maybe the sharing aspect is something that you would, you would uh, leave out. And just to be clear, you know, you, you do need to, uh, of course, uh, follow the interviewer's um, direction as well. So uh, I'm not saying, you know, cut the interviewer off. So no, I'm not going to do that. You know, you, you, if the interviewer says, no, actually, I really am interested in the sharing. Okay. Then you yeah. kind of have to go along with the interviewer. You can't, you know, you can't uh, just decide uh, unilaterally that you're not going to do that. Um, but I would say that starting with with a with a point of um, being intentional is, is is really useful and helpful and is a, is a good good approach. I think. Great. Okay. What's next? Number three. Yeah. Um, uh, so we've talked a little bit about uh, sort of efficiency of communication, mental model alignment, um, I, and, I, and as, a, as a part of this, uh, I want to say that the uh, dr drawing system design just by its nature involves drawing components and, and parts of the system. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, in a, in, a, in a company, if you're working with somebody, if you're collaborating with somebody, you'd be doing this on whiteboards, whether they're real or virtual, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, but in the context of an interview, you're using some sort of a drawing tool. And um, what, I, what I recommend to people is to think about approximately in terms of time frame, starting to draw something approximately a third of the way through the interview. So again, I'll use that 45 minute uh, number that I mentioned earlier. Let's say you actually have scheduled an hour the reality is you might have 50 minutes or 45 minutes or so. So approximately 15 minutes, you know, think of, and it's not, I, I really want to make, make it clear. It's not a hard number. It's just to sort of conceptually think about it. What you're wanting to do in order to align your and the interviewer's mental model better is utilize as many communication channels as possible. And one of those is a visual and that's where the drawing comes in. If you start drawing too soon, then it probably means that you don't really understand the problem uh, fully or, or well enough, and you might start going down a down a, a road that doesn't address the problem. So that's that's why I wouldn't start drawing immediately. You know, within a few minutes, if you wait, wait too long and it's 20 or 30, 25 minutes into the interview, and you start you, until you start drawing, then uh, you may not uh, have enough time really to finish to come up with a working solution. So again, it's just a, it's just a rough guideline. I, I don't want this people to get too hung up on this specific number. Um, but when you have enough of the requirements or understand the problem well enough, you've scoped it, you have a rough idea of the big things that you might be thinking about with the design. Maybe you've done some API work uh, definition. Um, that's a good time to start drawing. And so roughly a third of the way of the inter through the interview, adding that visual component helps the interviewer follow your train of thought. And again, this is this mental model alignment principle. So you can have a more efficient communication with the interviewer and they don't have to be re-envisioning the components that you're, that you're using in your design uh, in their head. They can see it, they can see you uh, drawing it. So that, that, that would be sort of a timing, maybe a timing point. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a, it's a very important one, but it's easier to say that it's not necessarily easy to stick to in the, in the heat of the moment, right? Because I know that on one of our videos you did for us, I can't remember which one, but I think you didn't start drawing till about uh, at least 20 minutes in. Uh, we let you get away with it because uh, we've done over time. But in a real yeah. interview, you would have been you would have been struggling for to, to finish it in time. So yeah, definitely. And um, I think you've got another tip about drawing, which uh, not many people talk about. But we'll we'll get onto that later on. So um, yeah, well, yeah, we'll keep <laughs> right. stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, what's uh, what's number four, Mark? Yeah. So um, I I think one of the principles again that I, 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 I and, and, uh, would like people to think about is that it's better for you to get to a working solution than uh, to optimize some components but never really get to a solution. So uh, and, and uh, so what I mean by that is um, people often make the fall into the trap if they're designing a system that has maybe 10 or 100 times the read to write ratio, just as an example. Oh, I immediately have to cache. That means a cache because we're doing more reads than writes. So let me add a cache into the system. 
and that's it's fine it's good as a matter of fact to to be clear with the interviewer that you're thinking about these these things um but don't go deep yet because the first the most important thing in my opinion is to get to a working solution something that will solve the the problem maybe not optimally initially uh, but uh, something that will solve the problem. So that is more important. So that what that means is start with a simple design. Uh, and it also means don't add requirements that don't exist. So sometimes people will add, uh, again, I'll just use an example here. Uh, maybe if you're building a stateful system where you're storing some data and people will say, okay, well, that's a lot of data. Well, I think we probably want to uh, tier the storage so that older data gets stored in cheaper system. So let me add that in there and, and so on. That's great that you're thinking about that as an inter as a candidate, but um, hold off on actually building that into your design mm -hmm. because otherwise it, it will complicate your design and you may not get to have enough time to get to a working solution. Again, think about that artificial 45 minute, 50 minute time yeah. frame. So start with a simple design uh, and, and you know if you have time, you can optimize later. That's great. And interviewers do like that. And you can mention it, right? You can say, like, yeah. you can say, oh, I'll, you know, I should, I need to do that, but I'll, I'll come back to that later. Yeah, and that's actually, that's a good, yeah, exactly. Great, great, uh, great point, Tom. I think what you just said actually is kind of almost another tip in, uh, in this list of tips and tricks. And I don't know what number we're on now. <laughs> five, maybe, four, I'm not sure. Four, four or five. <laughs> um, but one of the, uh, one of the things I would say is it, Again, it's good for interviewers to know that you have a breadth of knowledge around systems, distributed systems and system design. So it's good for them to know that you, um, for example, uh, know about caching and maybe different types of caching, know about load balancing, know about um, uh, uh, traffic management, whatever it might be, different storage tiers. You know, that was the other example I used. So it's good for interviews to know, to hear that from you. But uh, I would say, the tip is mention those things. And like you said, Tom, uh, you know, mention those things and say, if we have time, I can come back to it later. But don't go into depth on those things right away. So uh, this is kind of a breadth first versus depth first approach. So that you, the interviewer hears that these are things you're thinking about, but you've only spent maybe 10 seconds touching on it, giving them that signal, uh, but you're not spending a lot of time taking away from coming up with a working solution. Um, so that's, that's kind of, I would say that's a, that's definitely a tip. The, now the one caveat to that as similar to one I mentioned before is if the interviewer says, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Tell me more about caching. Okay. You know, now you're kind of in a situation where the interviewers expressed interest yeah. and you can kind of go along and you negotiate with them, you know, how much time you want to spend on this particular uh, aspect. Um, but, but don't just discard it obviously. Uh, but you know, you might still be aware of time and, uh, and spend you know some time, but not not a lot of time on it. Um, and yeah, like just Google have talked about this in in their materials that they give to candidates and 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 their own tips to try and help candidates. They talk about I think they might have been talking about the coding interview, but it's the same principle. Like in coding, they say do a kind of a brute force solution first, and then iterate and make it better. And it's the same for system design, right? Don't try and do the perfect design straight away. Get one that works and then spend the rest of your time in the interview improving it and making it better. Yeah, that's, it's, and, and, and you're right. It's, it's a, I, I would say it's, it's a best practice, uh, you know, from, in, from other sources like, you know, Google. Um, and and I, it makes me think, as you're t talking about this, it makes me think about uh, also the, the actual uh, industry a analog is uh, building an MVP, minimally viable yeah. product, right? You, you, sure. you want to get something out and then you want to iterate on it, right? And you want to improve it and things like that. And that's kind of a, uh, you know, a um, pretty typical industry practice, I would say, in, in the software engineering industry, because often time is a component that is valuable. And so you want to get something out. You want to start getting uh, traffic on, on the system and feedback so you can figure out, is it solving the problem? And then, you know, optimize it. So it also applies in, in actual <laughs> work, not just in interviews, but I think in interviews, it absolutely um, is, is appropriate. Um, uh, one, one other thing I, I'm, that you uh, made me think of as, you're, as we were talking about this is you mentioned Google as a, as a source of you know, tips and tricks that they recommend. I would also say a, a, a tip is absolutely, and, and many of you are doing this already, you know, by watching this video, you're doing this, but utilize the resources that are out there. So GitHub has a system design study guide, for example. 
uh, you know, utilize those resources, other YouTube videos, other other channels. Utilize all those resources that are that are out there. Um, there's there's great stuff out there, great resources out there, and of course, there's going to be some some differences of of opinion. So you know, it's it, that's okay. Uh, there's not this is not a um, uh, a recipe. <laughs> there's not one recipe for this, right? There's many ways to do this, but there I think there are some principles that are probably you'll yeah. see are are consistent across the different um, recommendations. Okay, so um, uh, something, something, another, um, if you want to call it a principle or, or maybe a, a concept here to, to, for you to keep in mind as you're doing the system design interview, um, it's related to scoping the problem. But I think the key thing here is to really understand the problem as best you can. So what I mean by that is that um, you, it, it is very tempting for us as engineering folks to uh, hear somebody describe a problem and our brain immediately goes into solutions mode and we go, oh yeah, yeah, I, I got this. I, I understand what this is. And when we start going down the solutions path, that's kind of, that's what we've, that's our training, that's our background, that's what we're, that's what we do. Uh, and and the the difficulty is that uh, we d are less likely to think about okay wait what are we building why are we building this what is the purpose of this what uh, maybe that's too strong but what is the thing that we're building and so really understanding the problem statement and uh, is is a good thing and the way one way to do that or one recommendation I have is a if let's say you're uh, designing to an API that is part of this system that you're, that you're building. Put, spend a few minutes, and again, this is kind of at the beginning, spend a few minutes putting your, your customer or your client or your application hat on and pretend that you are going to call your own APIs that you're just, uh, you, you're just worked through or designed or defined or, or thinking about. And, and think about specific use cases. Now, in, in the software industry, this could be, you know, you could think about this in terms of stories, um, the happy path, error paths, edge cases, you know, you could think of it in that space, but uh, I'm just saying, just, just put on your application at, pretend you're calling your API. What is it that you're specifying? What are you expecting back? Put your, I mean, if you need to like put on a hat, put on a hat uh, to put yourself in that situation, um, this can help catch things where, catch uh, assumptions that you might've made, your solutions brain might've made uh, that you then go, oh, actually, yeah, how, how am I going to indicate that this is the last call that I'm making or how am I going to uh, make sure that I'm dealing with this particular piece correctly? And this is very vague, I apologize. Uh, but I think that this can help, help you uh, really understand the problem better so that what you're designing solves the, is more likely to solve the problem, the stated problem. Um, along the way, of course, you know, the interviewer, this is also part of the mental model alignment, because as you're talking through these use cases, you can say, you know, is that, is that consistent with your thinking if you want to check in with the interviewer? And so you're kind of really making sure that you two are aligned on the, on the requirements of the problem. So that's, yeah. that's kind of a, I, I would say it's worthwhile spending a little time making sure you really understand the problem because it's so easy for us to think, oh, I got this. I know, the, I know exactly what this is. Um, so that, that, that's kind of, and to be clear, because again, this is a 45 minute, 50 minute interview. There's no possible way that you're going to get a PRD product requirements document from the sure. interviewer or even yourself, right? That's, you're not gonna get a full spec that specifies everything. So it's okay that you're going to discover some requirements or some things or have some aha moments along the way as you're doing the design, that's totally fine. But you wanna try and get the majority of the gist of the problem uh, earlier on so that you're in a, your, your main path that you're going down is, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, cool. What's next? So one thing that I think is, uh, um, important for, for you as candidates to do, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sort of lucky, fortunate that people who come to, you know, to me for, for coaching and using, you know, whether I got an offer or, or people who do coaching in general, that they're doing this, uh, you're practicing. Practice, practice, practice. Spend the time to uh, to to practice. It's really allow yourself, uh, um, you know, enough time also. But I'll get to that in just a moment. But but spend the time practicing because even you know, and I don't want to minimize 
you know, what I can do and help you with as a coach, but the practice that you do yourself actually can, can be super powerful and is a big, significant component of how well you do in an actual interview, because you'll catch things that, um, that, uh, you know, you wouldn't have caught if you didn't do practice. And so it's all fine and well to look at uh, system design study guides and just look at problems and think, yes, you've got it. But this, uh, this gap of knowing and doing gap that, that we as humans have is, 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 is a, uh, an important one. And so practice really, really helps. And it also helps. And this is what an experience I've had with candidates who have done, you know, maybe even repeated sessions is it helps them increase their confidence and yeah. uh, lowers their stress level. Uh, by practicing because it's just a muscle that you exercise. And so getting into that mode uh, by practicing uh, is, is really, really important. It's almost like going to the gym, I, I want to say. Um, and I don't want to overstate that, but I, I do think that the practicing is, is super valuable. And if you feel like, you know, uh, for whatever reason, doing it with a coach, you know, just doesn't work for you or, or you don't, you know, have the time or whatever, um, allow, record yourself, you know, use yeah. use any kind of a recording tool on your phone, your laptop, your whatever it might be record yourself and, and then watch it afterwards and just, just kind of critique it. So even that can be, be helpful. Uh, so I, I would say practice yeah. is, a, is a huge component and, and can really help you do much, much, much better in, in an actual interview. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, and like you say, obviously, I guess the ideal is to, you know, do a mock interview. Ideally, if it is with a, with a coach um, on our platform, then, then they can give you that expert feedback. But yeah, like you say, if you don't want to do that, it's still worth, trying to put yourself in that interview situation, whether you're recording yourself or, you know, even if you've, I don't know, you've got your brother there who doesn't know nothing about yeah. system design, <laughs> but just the fact that someone else is there kind of yeah. watching you, putting you under that pressure, you'll realize that, hang on a minute, actually doing it, speaking out loud, uh, it's a lot harder than, than when you're doing it in your head. So, um, and yeah, you'll get that muscle memory and the more times you do it, the, like you say, your stress levels will go down and your thinking will be a lot more, a lot clearer and your performance will be a lot better. So yeah, definitely, definitely agree with that. Yeah, and you, and I think you're also kind of uh, raising a point there, which is which is might be useful. Is I think um, if you're you know as a candidate, uh, if you're looking, if you're thinking about you know I got to do a system design mock interview, you know uh, to get the domain, you know get, check my domain knowledge, right? Things like that. Uh, that is definitely what you know. For example, I as a coach or other coaches who have been in the industry, you, you know, know the domain sort of system design. Mm -hmm. We can definitely help. Um, in the domains, the space of the system design domain, ask hard questions, you know, uh, critical poke holes, things like that. Um, and, and that's where we can help. But um, I, I think it's good to your point to also value the, the soft skills piece of that, just the communication piece of that. And so, like you said, if you, yeah. you know, have a sibling, your brother or, or sibling or somebody who has no idea what you're talking about, yeah. but, you know, they can just kind of, you know, see, are you, is, is your, how, what's your communication like? And are you making points? Are you explaining things? You know, that kind of yeah. thing that can still be valuable. It's a different, different kind of a uh, feedback than the domain feedback and, and the, the specific coaching uh, feedback that, you know, sort of we've been trained for, but it can still be valuable. Really so, valuable, yeah. yeah. Um, my mom, it, my mom always used to tell me that I, I touch my my hair and my face too much in interviews, ah, which uh, I didn't realize until okay. I saw a recording a recording of me. And yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's that, not that's, not a yeah. good look. Yeah, that's a <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, so one corollary to this um, to this practicing, taking the time to practice. Don't underestimate uh, the, the time that, that you need for a mock. So if you're going to sign up for a, a mock, let's say on our, either an Igon offer, whatever platform or, you know, whatever coach you're using or, or, or yeah. uh, maybe a, a former colleague, you know, who knows the domain, give, give you some feedback. I would say um, allow enough time for, the, for practice in the mocks. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too, uh, you know, specific on like a platform or anything like that, but... Uh, if you're doing, if you want to do a mock system design interview and you want to have, you know, tips and hear about tips and tricks or have a general conversation, you know, then maybe allow two hours, you know, maybe allow enough time to do the mock interview, to do the feedback, then to have more general discussion, maybe mm. try some things again. So give yourself enough time. Um, and, and, you know, that may not be practical always, but, but I would say if you can give yourself enough time to do these, these mock inter interviews, because we as coaches, 
you know, if we're doing a 45 minute interview with you, you know, we're, start, we're actually starting, you know, you're, you're starting the problem five minutes after the hour. And then we've got, you know, 10 minutes to do uh, feedback, you know, that that's yeah. that we have to, we, it's pretty tight. And yeah. so, you know, the more time you have, you know, the richer your, your uh, feedback you're going to get. So I would say just allow enough time. That's, that's really the corollary maybe to that. All right. So uh, another, another sort of tip or, or something to keep in mind maybe is, uh, and it's related to the principle of efficient communication in this mental model alignment that I mentioned earlier, is to explain your thinking. So if you are making a technology choice in your, in your design, explain to the interviewer what's behind that. And I'll, I'll use an example, um, which I think I've, I've used this in other videos, but also this is something that, that does come up quite a bit in my sessions. If, for example, you are choosing a database and you're going to choose a SQL or NoSQL database, um, if you're choosing a SQL database, for example, I, want to, I don't just want you to tell me that you're choosing a SQL database. I also, I mean, just to the extreme, I don't want you to just say, I'm going to use a database. Be a little more specific. I, I'm interested in a little bit level of detail there. So if you say, well, I, I think I'll use a, a SQL database like MySQL or something like that, mm -hmm. I want to understand why you're doing that. So I want to hear um, this data, you know, this data is pretty well structured. I'm going to have multiple tables here, and I'm going to need to be able to uh, do uh, uh, queries across these different tables, maybe even join tables. Uh, so there's a relationship between this data. It's structured, um, and uh, there's a lot of data. Uh, so I might have to do some sharding. That's a different sort of topic, of course, domain-specific to uh, topic. But the point, is, the main point here is explain to me why you're choosing this particu particular technology. I want to understand what's behind your thinking. Um, otherwise, I don't know whether you're just doing that because you read it in a textbook or online, hmm. um, or you know whether you actually have some judgment behind this. So judgment is something, a signal. I want to get a signal from you as, an, as a candidate that you have good technical judgment or decent technical judgment. And part of that um, includes making design choices or technical technology choices based on some, some aspects of the particular problem. So that's, that's what I think, is, uh, is, a, is a key thing. Uh, and if you do that, then I, as an interviewer, again, I'm getting a signal that you understand. Uh, not only do you understand why you're making a choice and, and the, the different aspects of different technology choices, but you're also communicating it to me in a way that I can understand. And then, my, then again, our mental models are aligned. I'm not wondering. I'm not expending energy going, why? You know, I, I may not agree. I may not agree as an interviewer with your choice. But that's OK. I'm trained to, to, to handle that. But I need to understand why. So that's, that's yeah. the, uh, really that, that point. Definitely. Definitely a really important point. Yep. OK. What's next? So something that uh, is, comes up in, um, in these study guides and it comes up in my conversation, you know, my coaching sessions a lot as well. Uh, and it comes up, um, I would say, to a varying degree in actual interviews. So it, de uh, it, it may depend on um, the particular role that you're interviewing for or the particular company. Um, Google, fan companies, larger companies are likely to be more interested in hearing about scale. As you're doing your system design, you know scaling scaling your design, and of course, you know there's the the actual how do you scale your system piece of it. The point I would like to make is uh, more about coming up with doing some numbers. And so, the companies, the interviewers are they're not looking for perfect math. Um, they're not looking for for uh, encyclopedic knowledge. But what what we are looking for, the signal we are looking for, is that you can make some assumptions about things and you can do some really rough back of the envelope math. So let me be more specific about what I mean by that. Is um, if, for example, you've got a, uh, a statement or non-functional requirement as you're going through the thing that says, uh, okay, I want to be able to do um, a billion queries a day. Okay, so I want to know as an interviewer, I want to know that you know how to translate that approximately into instantaneous traffic numbers. So, you know, that I want to know that you can go from day to seconds per se or request per second. Uh, that's mm -hmm. it's not nothing surprising here. But uh, you don't need to do that uh, by, by reinventing the wheel of how many seconds there are in a day, for example, 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. That's not what we're 
That's not what's interesting. You, it's fine to say, well, there's approximately 100,000 seconds in a day, so let me just use that. If you want to use exponent math, that's totally fine. Many people do that. That's okay. Consistent with my previous point, explain your thinking and help me yeah. make sure that I can follow your math as an interviewer. So if, if you need to write it down, write it down. Um, I personally don't care if you use a calculator. That doesn't matter to me, but I want to know that you understand this, uh, that you can kind of, that you know what's going on. Uh, and so if it's just, if you're just putting numbers out there without any explanation, then I don't have a signal that you understand how to do this. So using this example again, billion, uh, billion queries a day. Um, and so you have approximately 100,000 seconds, uh, you know, in a, in a day. Uh, so I think that gets you to uh, 10,000, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 10,000 queries per second. Um, and so that's fine. Like, so now you know the average number of queries, you know, that your the system is going to get per second. There's two things here. One of them is I want to also hear from you that you know about peaks, peak mm -hmm. traffic. So, you know, that, what you, that doing that math gives you an average. And, but, you know, systems ha, uh, have diurnal cycles, you know, the, the traffic comes and goes. And I want to know that you know about peaks. What the, what the peak factor is, I don't care. I'm not looking for you to know exactly what it is. You know, is yeah. it 10? Is it 5? Is it 2? Is it, that doesn't matter. But I want to know that you are thinking about this and that this is something that you are aware of. So mm -hmm. that's a signal I want to hear. Now, if you've got these numbers, this, this, this rough number, 10,000, let's say you say a peak of 5. So it's 50,000 at uh, request per second uh, at peak. Now it's fine to, from, a, from a, like a scaling. If the question comes up about how many instances you need, it's fine for you to make some assumptions. You know, the server might handle 1,000 requests per second, so we'll need 50. That's, and that's good enough. That's, that's all I'm really interested in. And of course, if you happen to mention, well, you know, these days you use Elastic, uh, or not, um, elastic use uh, auto scaling uh, in order to grow the number of servers um, based on some, some signals, great. That, that's fine, that's also good to know. But I just wanna get that rough idea. So you need to be able to do that math. So, that, so that's, that's sort of on the traffic side. Uh, and on the storage side, get comfortable with the, uh, the units. <laughs> so by units, I mean, you know, bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, uh, now exabytes, you know, in, in these days, depending on how big this thing gets. Mm -hmm. So get comfortable with that and take advantage of the fact that these are a factor of a thousand apart from each other. You can utilize that to make think your life simpler. So if you do some math and you come up with, oh my gosh, that's, uh, that's 10,000 gigabytes. Uh, wait, is that a tera? Is that a pet? Is that, you know, utilize the fact that a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. Great. Now you've just reduced three zeros and you got 10, 10. So, so utilize that, get comfortable with that math, get comfortable with those units. I think that's a, that's a, a useful skill to have. And you may not use it in the interview. It may not come up, but I think it's, uh, it's an easy thing to practice, I think. And it's, uh, it's something that, that can, can come in useful and gives the interviewer another signal that you're comfortable with scale, with systems yeah. at scale. Um, and of course, the last tiny corollary to that one is um, if you're doing bandwidth calculations, uh, don't forget about bits per second versus bytes per second. Networking is expressed in bits per second, but when you're doing like, you know, uh, we're uploading files that are in, in bytes, make sure that when you're computing uh, the, the networking ingress, egress, that you get to bits per second, which is, again, roughly 10 bits in a byte. No, it's eight, I know, but roughly it's 10 and you can utilize that for your, uh, to, to keep it simple. So get comfortable with the math, be able to do it. Again, this is efficiency. You can't spend a lot of time that. And if you're not um, reasonably comfortable doing this and efficient, then you're gonna spend more time in the interviewer than in the interview, excuse me, then you need to, yeah. and that will take away time from coming up with a working solution or optimizing things, pointing out bottlenecks, whatever it might be. And obviously you mentioned there that using a calculator, and I think it's tempting for pe some people to think, oh, I'll, I'll just use a calculator and that will solve, that will solve it. But really, it, you need to kind of be comfortable with the logic behind what you're doing, right? And so a calculator isn't going to help you if you're, if you're kind of lost with the numbers and all the zeros and a calculator can only it can only do the calculation right it can't it can't kind of uh solve solve your thinking for you right so um yeah i think um i think i think that's definitely a good tip would you so would you be okay though for someone to use a calculator for certain calculations as long as you could kind of see that they were comfortable uh with with what they were doing with the numbers 
Yes. I, for, okay. if I, as an, and, and, uh, and I, even when I did, you know, actual interviews in Google and other places, mm. um, just what you said, which is just what you echoed my, my, my comments, which is it's fine for you to use a calculator, but if I don't, if I, I need a signal from you that you also understand what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's yeah. similar to, you know, in, in, in school when, you know, the, the, the teacher writes on there, show your math, you know, show your, you know, yeah. it's similar to that, right? I need to understand yeah. that, you know, the, I think you use the word logic behind it, which I think is a, is a, it's a good, that's a good word. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, right. I think, uh, I think we got time for one more, one, one more, more okay. tip. Yeah. And I think you mentioned at the beginning, uh, something we would come back to and people maybe don't think about too much. Uh, yeah. So, um, we talked a little bit about, uh, drawing and utilizing a visual as a, you know, visual aid, you know, about a third of the way in is what I recommended in, in the interview. Um, and, and that, that drawing that you'd be doing. Um, so I think something, one thing I would say is be aware of what tool the particular interviewer or company or whatever, what, what they want you to use. Uh, some companies are more flexible than others. You know, at Meta, you might be using Scala Draw. At Google, you might, they might want you to use a Google Drawing or something like that. So be aware of what the tool that you can use are. And if you feel comfortable in one tool um, and it's not the one that, you know, from the company, then you could check with the recruiter, right? I think that, you know, you, you might be able to, to negotiate that a little bit. Um, but the key thing I would say is wh what do you need to, how comfortable do you need to be in this in this tool? Well, again, it's it's about efficiency. You need to, you know you want to be able to dr draw things efficiently. This is a whiteboard. It's a visual aid. It's not a design document. So mm. there are three things that you need to know how to do in in any tool. Pick your tool. You need to know how to draw boxes, shapes. I'll say, text and arrows. Mm. That's it. Colors don't matter. This is my, now this is my strong opinion here. And this is how I have interviewed people and how I've treated it. I've treated this as a whiteboard, as a drawing tool or a vis uh, visual aid. And so colors, you know, are, are not important. Perfect connection of arrows is not important. Comprehensiveness that arrows have, you know, bi-directional uh, arrows is not important. Uh, you know, that you don't have to have an arrow for every single thing. Uh, text, just have the text be good enough that we can, that you can refer to it. Uh, it's again, it's a visual aid. So what that means is um, if you, it's more important that you can draw the components in boxes so that I as an interviewer, when you're talking about a component or pointing at a component with your mouse, that I know what you're talking about. Um, if you're missing an arrow or if there's a directionality, but you, you're talking through it, that's fine in my opinion. This is again, this is not, a, not going to go into a design document for somebody to review. Is just a whiteboard. It's just a visual aid. The, the main thing is I don't want to, as an interviewer, have to reconstruct and keep in my head the uh, the components, uh, the major components of your of your design, um, because that's very hard. That's very exhausting. That takes a lot of my energy that I need to use to, to evaluate how you're doing in the interview. So if I if we're both referring to the same picture, and even as you're moving your mouse around, that uh, connects us much better, and I can just relate to what you're talking about. I can relate to the components when you're talking about, you know, a flow, uh, I can do that. So that to yeah. me is the most important piece of it is that you know how to draw shapes, text and arrows, get comfortable doing that. Uh, and if, if, you, if you get in a situation where you're an expert at Excalibur and you've never used Google drawings before, but Google requires you to use Google drawings, I'm not sure they do, but if they do, then okay, Play around with Google Drawings, spend the time, but don't worry about all the fancy features. Don't worry yeah. about ordering, grouping, uh, perfect arrow connections, colors, text fonts, you know, whatever. Just, just get it so that you can use it as a visual aid and just get comfortable with those basic things. Know where those menus are. That's all you really need to do. And this is, sounds like a, um, a little trivial thing, a uh, mechanical thing, but uh, again, it's about, it's, it's to the point of efficiency, efficient, an efficient interview so you have enough time to get to a working solution. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I mean, I've seen, I've seen people in suddenly who, who know like really ex experienced coaches who, who suddenly they're searching for the right button to click and it throws, <laughs> it can really throw you off your, off your stride. So yeah, I think there's, there's, there's on that, that don't, you know, be comfortable, but then don't, you don't need to go so far that like you say, you're not actually being marked, you know, you're not being graded on the diagram, right? right? Your diagram is to support your answer, which you yes. are being graded on. 
Yes. So, yes. yes. That's an and, important and, point. You know, a, uh, a, again, a corollary I would say to this as well is um, uh, sometimes your design, and it's related to an earlier point as well, sometimes your design will change. You might change your, you, maybe the interviewer, um, maybe there's a requirement that, you know, usually it's a new requirement, not new, or a requirement you didn't maybe get or whatever it is, something that changes, requires you to change your design. It's fine. Remove a box if you don't need it anymore. Move it around. It's okay to change your mind. Again, this is not yeah. going to go into print. You know, it's not something, so it's not permanent. So it's it's absolutely fine to, to move these things around and iterate on these things. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of a corollary to the to the drawing point. Cool. Mark, uh, we made it. Um, wow, there's <laughs> been some really useful stuff there. Thanks a lot. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you want to see more of Mark, then do check out some of the mock system design interviews that he's done for us. Um, and you can see him applying the, some of the very tips that he's been talking about today. Um, cool. Thanks for watching, Mark. Thanks for doing it. Uh, Thank hope you. to do something with you again soon. Hello. I really hope you found that useful. If you did, you can like and subscribe. And why not come visit us at igotanoffer.com. There you can find more videos, useful frameworks, and question guides, all completely free. And you can also book expert feedback one-to-one -one with our coaches from Google, Meta, Amazon, etc. Thank you, and good luck with your interview.